Hi guys, hope uh, everybody's doing pretty well. This is the uh, lesson we're going to do this week here. Uh, exponential functions. You have heard of it in the news more recently. Uh, let's get a go here. And so the basics. An exponential function has x as an exponent. Okay, so the variable is now an exponent, which makes it an exponential fu function. Um, if the number here, b, the number in front, or the number that's the constant with the exponent with it, is greater than 1, then you're going to have exponential growth. All right, if it's less than 1, or really between 0 and 1, negatives are its own different thing with reflection. All right, between 0 and 1, then it's exponential decay. We're also going to need this word asymptote. An asymptote is a line that the graph approaches but never really touches. And so if you think of um, exponential growth, you know, we always think of it going up forever. But as it's going down, it's getting closer and closer and closer to some line that never really touches. I mean, we're talking, you know, if it's, say, that graph, that's zero, it's going, you know, here it's 0 0.1, here it's 0 0.01, here it's 0 0.0001, here it's 0 0.0001, but it just never really touches zero. Right? Or it can not be zero. Um, the parent function will be zero, though. And so exponential functions, and then exponential growth, exponential decay, and asymptote. That's kind of the vocabulary. It's kind of the basics. And if you're still writing things down in your notes right now, uh, you can pause this. Uh, we're going to click on the next slide. Exponential growth. So this is a parent function exponential growth curve. You graph it, it's y-intercept is at 0, 1. It has points that continuously grow, so its end behavior here to the right is that it goes up. Um, the, re the domain is all reals. It goes left and right forever. The range is all reals bigger than zero. It's, if it's growth, it's always going to be y is greater than or equal to really greater than um, the asymptote. So the asymptote here is the x-axis. The asymptote is y equals zero uh, because it never really touches that. Well, it's hard to tell, but it never really touches that asymptote. When we're going to talk about graphing these. Obviously, you can use decimals to graph these as well. Uh, but we'll talk about making a chart and table. Exponential decay. Here's an exponential decay parent function. Notice that the end behavior as it goes to the right, as it's going to the right, the end behavior is that it's getting closer and closer to zero or closer and closer to whatever the asymptote is. Again, in the parent function, the y-intercept is 1, 0, 1. The domain here is still all reals. The range here is um, still greater than or equal to 0. y is greater than, not or equal to, sorry, I keep saying or equal to. Just y is greater than 0 because it never touches the asymptote. And the asymptote here is still the x-axis. This x-axis is the line that never quite touches. So that will be an exponential decay graph. So exponential growth, you know, we talked about more about uh, recently with the viruses, and viruses grow exponentially, right? So one person infects 40 people, and that person, those 40 people infect 40 more people, so I got 100, you know, 1,600 people infected, all right? Um, 
exponential decay would be like a half-life of a radiation. And so I've, we're going to use the examples we're going to use today. Uh, I've already started for you here. All right, the tables. All right, but you're going to make a table and it's pick points. All right, because it's easier to type these in a kind of one at a time. So 2 to the negative 2 power is 1 fourth of 0.25. 2 to the negative 1 power is 1 half of 0.5. Anything to the 0 power. Anything to the zero power is one. And then two to the second power, two squared is four. And so then you take those points and you fix that. Take those points, you just dot, 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 dot and then you draw it. Now, you know it's going to be uh, in a uh, behavior. We'll talk about how you know the asymptote a little more in a uh, bit with uh, things here, but you see that's getting closer and closer and closer to zero. So as soon as you see a number that's, so this is my asymptote right here. It's never getting past that. Right? And so the domain, the domain is X such that it's all reals. Right? That's the set. Range is y such that y is greater than zero. It's going up forever. Y intercept was zero one. Or you just say one. The asymptote was y equals zero. That's the x-axis. Crosses the y-axis, so it's y equals zero. The end behavior as x goes to the right, it's you can put y or f of x, right? f of x approaches infinity. As it goes to the left, f of x approaches zero. Remember, it's not really going down forever anymore. Now it's just getting closer and closer and closer to zero. So from that one graph, taking the time to make a table, we can graph of it. We can do the domain, the range, the y-intercept, the asymptote, and the end behaviors. Remember, these are just fancy ways down here of saying, you know, as it goes to the right, approaches positive infinity. As it goes to the right, y is going to positive infinity, which is up for y. As x approaches negative infinity, negative infinity on the x-axis is to the left. Ooh, well. And then f of x, uh, the y is version 0. All right. Try this on your own. You got a table started for you. The graph I gave to you because I don't know if anybody has graph paper at home. All right. Go ahead and try to see, figure out what those are and see if you can figure out the domain range or you're set the other top of the Please pause this at this point and try this example. Uh, I'll go over here shortly. All right, hopefully you paused it. Hopefully you've given it a go. Have an answer. You plug in one half to the negative two power, and you got four. Plug in anything to the zero power is one. So hopefully you got those. The domain is all reals. The range is greater than zero. The y-intercept is because it's a parent function basically here. Uh, it's still zero one. Um, asymptote is um, y equals zero. And the end behaviors as x approaches negative infinity y approaches supposed to be a little arrow there x approaches negative infinity y approaches positive infinity as it goes left it goes up as x approaches negative or positive infinity right, y approaches zero
So now this is review. This all looks funkier and exponential, but it's review. So when it comes to plus or minus, that's transform that's translation. And if it's inside parentheses, right, it moves it left and right. If it's outside parentheses, it moves it up and down. Well here the K, this K is outside. There is no parentheses, but because it's in the exponent with the X, that's inside. So it counts like it's in parentheses. Remember, anything in parentheses is the opposite. So if it was minus 2, it wouldn't go left 2. It would go the opposite. It would go right 2. And in front here, the A, that's probably the hardest one. A, if A is negative, it's a reflection. So if negative, A negative is an automatic reflection. And then if A is uh, like it's negative, it's, uh, it's just say normal about negative anymore. It's 2, it's a number bigger than 1. And it's going to stretch it. If it's like half, it's going to compress it, right? And so it stretches and compressions as well as translations. And we're going to identify those. Um, we've done that with other functions. Each function we've done. Uh, now we're doing with exponential functions. And so each part of this is its own little thing. So the negative part, the negative part is a reflection. So that is one of the transformations that has happened here. Okay. The one half, it's a number less than one, and so it's a compression. The three X is out in black there. That's, that's our base. That's what we're working from. That doesn't do anything. It's just that is the root exponential growth uh, here. All right, but the plus four. The plus four is like it's inside parentheses because it's up in the exponent. And so we want to think about plus four as being to the uh, left or right four. Everything has its opposite in parentheses, so it's, it's going left for. And then the plus one is outside, and so it's up one. And so, you know, if we think of the normal curve, this one's going to be left four of that, up one of that. It's going to be compressed a little bit, and it's going to be reflected. So it's actually going to be flipped and going down. If you think you have it, give it a go. The next example here gives some choices. Take some time, read the g of x equation, and pick which one you think it is, a, b, c, or d. Try to kind of explain your answer out loud, even if you're talking. To no one, uh, try to say it, you know, and reason it, explain the reason, and then uh, we'll go over it together here. So hit pause now if you're going to give this a try. All right. Hopefully you were able to try that successfully. The negative, the negative means that it's going to open down. And so as soon as I see that negative, I know, shh. Ain't that one. All right. The plus four means it's up four, so it ain't going to be that one. All right. And then the minus two means it went to the right two, All right. which is this one. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. C would have been the correct answer. So these ones are very similar. Um, they look a lot harder than they are here. All right. So it looks a lot more challenging, but it wants you to find values of K for each one of these things. Uh, here, F of X plus K. 
Alpha X stays the same every time. This 3.5 X doesn't really matter to us even. All right, that's just, they're all going to be 3.5 to the power of X. All right. Um, so plus K, this, we know it's not down here as, you know, down here where it should be. At, at zero, zero, or zero, one. All right, it went up. So it's supposed to be, you know, at zero, one. It went up one, two, three, four. And so K is plus four. Here, it just got flipped. And so K is just, K is just negative. Or negative one, you could say. Right? Here, it went down. Went down, it's supposed to be, this the wire is supposed to be a zero one, so it went down one, two. All right, so down two. So K is just minus two. So, you know, you guys use the same facts we use for example two. Here in example three, you have some of those in your homework. Percent rate of change. Exponential growth of a constant percent increases over a specific time period. It's being modeled by the function. And so this function is our percent rate of change. Right. And so we're going to use this uh, for basically for story problems. We're going to use this percent rate of change equation. So give you the equation. You've got to know how to plug things in. So A is your like initial base amount, the principal, what you start out with. R is the rate. Now, rate's easy. G is the percent. You just know it's got to be the percent as a decimal. And T is the time, which, I mean, they could do it over months, years. Uh, I think we're going to stay with the years for our examples we're going to do today. So this is the kind of problem we're talking about here. Mr. Lopez recently won the lottery. Good for Mr. Lopez. Suppose Mr. Lopez takes the lump sum payment and he invests $50 million into an account that yields 5% interest annually. Graph of function and models the amount in this account but estimate the amount in the account after 20 years. And so that's the part we're going to really focus in on here. And so what a, I, I want to make some marks here, and then we'll do it on another slide. Right? How much money do you start out with? You start out with $50 million. Right? What's the percent rate? Rate is 5%. Well, I don't want to have. Percent means per 100. So it's 5 over 100. So if you have a calculator, you do 5 divided by 100. All right. And you get 0 0.05. So that's what I actually want to use as my, my R, my 0 0.05. And then T was 20 years. And so I need to identify the, the A, R, and T from my story problem. And then go ahead and plug it in. And so now we'll, we'll add a page. And we'll do that. So we have, again, uh, just a reminder here, our, our Plug it into and so it was fifty and then point zero five and twenty. And so it's fifty, it's one point zero five to twenty. Then you type it to a calculator. You get some weird decimal answer, right? And then just round it. And so it was. And I typed into my calculator. I got 132. And I just rounded it to 0.7 million. So that's about how much money invested properly is going to have after 20 years. So good for Mr. Lopez. Any, any questions about this stuff? You can email me. Um, and I'll be more than willing to try to help you out or set up a Zoom meeting or something to explain it better. You can also go to the notes from the lesson um, on McGraw-Hill and 
they'll be there too. All right, so last example, last example, example five here. You're just going to say growth or decay for all of these. And so the, the letter here, the number here rather, is five, five to the power of x, five the root, the base is bigger than one. So let's grow. Base here, the number, two sevenths. Two sevenths the base, the root, two sevenths. Point zero one. So it's decay. Down here is C. C is probably the trickiest one. Four thirds. It's a fraction looking thing. But four thirds. Four thirds is bigger than one. So let's grow. Give it a try. Do D and E. Pause the video now. Give it a try on your own. All right, hopefully you did those successfully if you hit pause. And D is 1.05. Not very much bigger than 1, but bigger than 1 nonetheless. And so it is growth. All right, exponential growth. This is obviously smaller than one, so it's exponential decay. All right, for your lesson, you can go into the McGraw Hill site, Clever McGraw Hill, open up your book. It should be right there on the calendar. It should be pretty easy to find. It's 1171 assignment. If not, you go to your assignments list. All right, it should be right there. Click on it. You can do it all on the computer. All right. Um, also on the McGraw Hill site, if you really, really wanted to, for some reason, work uh, on paper uh, from like the workbook. Uh, the workbook is online, so you should be able to find that on that front page when you log into your book on the McGraw Hill site. Um, but the numbers we're doing are, well, we, I really jumped around there. Uh, so it's a lot easier, a lot more organized, and uh, the graphing is extremely easy because you're just like choosing A, B, C, D. If you do it in the less than seven one assignment. Good luck, guys. Let me know if you have any questions. Hope again that everybody is doing well.